What is up, it's Ticket Melt. Thank you for stopping by. And a couple of things that I wanted to share with you guys with regards to Brian Laundry and some other weird stuff on the internet. The first thing is apparently there was this Brian Laundry lookalike that was ambushed by the feds at gunpoint on the Appalachian Trail. This is the guy right here. I'll put a bigger picture on the screen. And it reads, an upstate New Yorker bearing an uncanny resemblance to Brian Laundry had a rude awakening when U.S. Marshals on the hunt for the fugitive pulled their guns on him during a nap on the Appalachian Trail. Ithaca couple Severin Beckwith and Anna Brettman were catching a few winks at the lodge at Fontana Village Resort after lunch when they heard a knock and their door flew open. Next thing I see is a bunch of guys with riot shields with U.S. Marshals written on them, handguns pointed at my face, Beckwith told the magazine. The stunned hiker was promptly handcuffed as one of the feds helped Bretman get dressed. Damn, it's serious out there for these white bald men. Beckwith, who resembles laundry, said he had a hunch why he was targeted on the Appalachian Trail, where tipsters have reported spotting the 23-year-old fugitive. The doppelganger told the New Yorker that one of the agents touched the side of his head and said the look like had a notch in the upper part of the inner ear, just like his. Making matters worse for Beckwith was that he and Bretman, who had been hiking from Georgia to Virginia since late September, had booked their room with a credit card connected to an Empire State ID and Petito was originally from Long Island. But Beckwith was quickly cleared because he didn't have Laundry's telltale tattoos and produced an ID that ruled him out as the wanted man. Following the marshal's advice, Beckwith shaved his beard. Wow. But he quickly regretted it because I have much less of a chin than Laundry does. Beckwith suspects that an employee at the Fontana Lake Marina alerted authorities to his presence and even snapped this photo, which a marshal showed the guests after breaking down the door. Damn. So they just busted in. However, for their trouble, the lodge provided the couple with a free night stay and a complimentary breakfast. It was a buffet. We took as much as we could, Beckwith said. Now, the next thing is this weird post from September 28th. A couple of people sent this to me and it reads, edit, a lot of people told me to delete my post or my account private and hide myself from the world. But I'm hoping the more time and energy everyone spends harassing me will take that time away from being hurtful to other people. This world is filled with ugliness, and if I can absorb some of it and spare someone else, I will. To those who are thanking me for trying to expose the unjust bias for profit media and to try to stand up against people harshly judging one another as if they know everything that happened between those two people, thank you for keeping your heart and mind open. God bless you. P.S. Mental health issues are nothing to joke about. Countless people are killing themselves and countless others are hurting or killing each other because the issues are not being addressed or taken seriously. And there's still a stigma that make people afraid or embarrassed to get help they desperately need. Stop perpetuating the stigma and promoting taking care of your mental health and setting healthy boundaries. A tragedy like this could have been avoided. Mocking and spewing unproductive, hateful things doesn't help anyone in any way. It's self-serving. That you've convinced yourself it is serving some sort of justice without any regards for who is hurting or helping it's hard too because i know brian and he's really nice and his mother is an absolute gem i worked with roberta she crocheted me a poncho she's given me so much advice throughout my time working with her and we've remained close friends since then and it breaks my heart to see two families going through such horrible things and the entire world is gawking and throwing their two cents in and making fun of them like we're in elementary school and nobody taught each other how to be kind to one another. I think the hardest thing is all the people acting like they know what happened before any information got out and talking horrible things about Brian and his family. There was another murder not far from there around the same time, but there was no big press on it. What I do believe is that Gabby has a laundry list of mental health issues financial irresponsibilities and other issues and brian and his family have been so supportive through the years she lived in their home rent free both with the sister of brian and with the parents at different times i spoke with roberta at length about some of the situations that had occurred in the house while they were all living together it did not sound easy the fact that people are saying brian stole her van and used her card when i know he poured in so much of his savings for her to live her dream and to try to make her happy is heartbreaking. He's being treated like the scum of the earth and how his parents are being treated like the parents of the scum of the earth because they are trying to do the right thing and protect him. And anyone who thinks they wouldn't do whatever they could for their child doesn't deserve children. The truth may never come out, 
the whole truth. And even if Gabby was murdered by someone else, if it turns out that it was an accident or self-inflicted, Brian and his family will forever be hated. And even if it's completely proven without a doubt not to be the one responsible for her death, half the world thinks they know what happened based on a few news articles. That's scary. There are two other posts from this person that I'm going to read to you guys. And this is within 24 hours that it was posted. And it says here, it makes me feel pretty bad that people have nothing better to do than to jump on the bandwagon and say hurtful things to people who are close to the damage than they will ever be. Seems like some weird phenomena that I'm kind of just letting go instead of deleting my post because I already know the world is an ugly place and I'd rather people waste their time and energy harassing me than harassing somebody else who maybe has a harder time not being hurt by the words of strangers. I was bullied a good portion of my life. People think they knew me from a few excerpts. I can't imagine what the families of Gabby and Brian must be going through with all these people who feel it necessary to spread war, not peace. I'll take the heat if it means somebody else is spared. And to those of you who are giving me support and trying to explain that there's always more to the story and ask that people don't jump on the defense or the offense based on a few things they read on the internet, God bless you and thank you for keeping an open mind and having huge hearts. This lady goes on to post several more posts and I'm not sure what to make of it, man. Like, cause I was thinking, is she trolling? Is she trolling? But then I just don't see the benefit of doing this because people are already pulling information up on her, posting previous situations that she's had. And I just don't know what the benefit of this would be. I, I mean, attention, but it's such negative attention. I don't think it would be beneficial. I did see the picture with the poncho. You know, I, I don't know. This post here is another recent post that says, bless you. And yes, please pass my best wishes to Roberta and Chris. When you speak to them, I am from England, UK, and my family all feel very supportive of Chris and Roberta. So there must be many more in the world who feel the same. Stay strong. And this is quotes that she put. I guess somebody reached out to her. And then she wrote, the authorities, I'm sure, have already read all communications Roberta had with anyone, including me. I have not been able to reach them for months despite my attempts to give my support to their family and my advice not to let the media and the people reading the media and responding with limited information get to them. People will misquote you and demonize you and let them. There is nothing you can do to stop people from forming opinions based on hardly anything and spewing the frustration they have in their lives onto you because everyone wants someone to blame for their troubles. People are misquoting me and that's just the way it is. People will twist what you say. I want to thank those who are keeping love and understanding in the forefront of their minds. We are living in the age of digital witch hunts. Yes, Roberta and I were friends, but I did not say much of what is being quoted to me. If you read what I actually wrote, you would see the truth. But most people don't go that far to find the truth before speaking their own opinion projecting their own biased emotions and trying to paraphrase and condemn others. It's just the instant gratification world we're in. It'd be nice if the news stations cared about the truth, but they just care about ratings. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. I'm not going to bother reading this one, but this is another quote that she took. And it's basically, I guess, people in support of Christopher and Roberta Laundry around the world. Again, I don't know if this is trolling or not. But to do this on your profile, which it seems like it's really her profile and people are digging and pulling up information on her. I just don't see the benefit of doing something like this. And so it's plausible that she knew Roberta. Now, with regards to Brian Laundrie's father, Christopher, apparently there's some sort of lawsuit. You're not going to believe this. I got sent this post this morning with regards to a protester sign that was taken off chris's property i guess they're suing for the sign so this guy's gonna have to appear let me show you a bigger picture december 1st 9 30 a.m christopher laundry i'm gonna show you the other document that jonathan posted and i guess it's gonna be over a zoom video call and this is andrea griffin versus christopher laundry and this is the complaint statement of claim under a hundred dollars this claim is for forty dollars on or about October 15, 2021, plaintiff contributed funds 
and help construct the sign with the words what if it was cassie in reference to cassie laundry the daughter of defendant as part of a peaceful protest the sign which is the subject matter was erected near the home of christopher laundry a married man in the city of northport's public easement on or about the morning of october 16 2021 the defendant christopher laundry came out of his house walked up to the sign stole it and walked back into his property what do i personally think about the lawsuit it, to me, it seems kind of dumb. Uh, there's a lot of conversation going back and forth on Twitter with regards to, you know, can they do this? Is this right? You know, it, they're saying it was on the easement. So, like, I guess they're trying to say it was considered public property. It wasn't, like, on his private property. I thought it wasn't a private property, but they're saying no. Somebody said, nope, on the swallow, not his property. The sign was trespassing, I believe. No, it was on the public easement, which does, which doesn't count as trespassing. I don't know, man. Forty dollars. I mean, I guess it's more than the forty dollars. I guess they just want to give uh, Christopher the hardest time they can give him. I just don't see this holding up in court. It just seems so. Just forty dollars. You know what I mean? Somebody here said, "Chas, it will. It costs them more just filing this in Florida if the sign is considered harassment. They can also get fined." Yeah, I I don't know what's going to be the turn out of that, and I, I'm guessing it's not about the $40. It's more to, I don't know, maybe apply pressure or something like that. Uh, but here is also Jonathan posted this, and there's a couple of seconds that I'm going to show you of the current signs out there. Better call, better call Sa or better call Bertolino. Dirty laundries. And Brian in a headlock by bounty hunter dog. So, and that's pretty much it for now. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please hit the like button, the subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss the live streams or videos. Take care of yourselves and peace.